Hi, and thanks for choosing Planet Rentals for your next outdoor adventure. Uh, first off, we're going to go over some general trailer information that is pertinent to all of our different camping trailers, and then we'll go specifically over the camping trailer that you have reserved. First of all, when you come for your reservation, make sure you plan enough time to get paperwork filled out and the trailer hooked up. Uh, when appointments are rushed, we always find that then, you know, some information is skipped over or, you know, we're not as thorough as we'd like to be. So make sure you plan plenty of time for your pickup appointment. Secondly, make sure that you have your driver's license and the insurance card for the vehicle that will be towing our trailer available and ready for us. We'll need copies of those along with the contract that you sign. Now it's important that you know what type of site you're going to with the trailer. Uh, many sites have water, power, and sewer hookups, and many sites have none of that at all. And how the trailer works and operates is quite dependent on that, and so you'll want to know those differences before you head out there. And then I wanted to go over some general driving tips for you. When you're towing a trailer, it's always very important to drive at a very slow and safe speed. Um, you know, it's just not worth pushing. You know, plan some extra time in your trip so that you have plenty of time to get where you're going. It's easier on our trailer and easier on your tow vehicle if you just take it easy. Secondly, because you'll be a longer rig, you need to make sure that you're careful when you're cornering. You need to take corners a little bit wider and, you know, plan for that sort of thing. It's always smart to know exactly where you're going, have, you know, good directions or have driven there before because it's hard to make evasive maneuvers or U-turns and that sort of thing when you have a trailer in tow. And then whenever you're backing up the trailer, make sure that you have someone there helping you back up uh, to help you make sure you don't, of course, run into any obstacles and that sort of thing. And then uh, when you're setting up the trailer, you want to make sure that you're being careful of anything that's overhead on the trailer or around the sides of it. Many of our trailers have slide outs or pop downs and that sort of thing that extend from the side of the trailer. So before you get it all set up, you want to make sure there's plenty of clearance all around the trailer. And then also we want you to really treat our trailers well. We have what we feel the best trailers and the best pricing out there of any RV dealer. And a big part of that is because we really feel like we have the best renters. So we do put some responsibility on you to make sure you take care of our units. Uh, you know, we suggest taking your shoes off when you go inside the trailer. That really just helps with cleanup. It helps maintain the floor and the, you know, the furniture, all that sort of thing. We suggest that you try not to take the trailer off-road. We suggest that you keep it nice and swept and clean. And then, you know, help with eliminating horseplay and other rough activities that may happen in or outside the trailer just to help you know keep it nicer and cleaner for those that come after you and then also wanted to note that all of our trailers have a spare tire on them of course but that spare tire is not intended for long distance driving that spare tire is intended to get you somewhere to get a tire repaired and replaced so that um, you know you can continue on with your trip so please don't plan on using the spare tire to drive any extended distance if something were to happen to one of the original tires on the trailer. We of course keep all those tires in great working condition for you. Now we'll go over the general hookup of the trailer to the tow vehicle here. So the first thing we're going to do is lower the trailer down onto the ball of the vehicle. And then every trailer comes with a safety pin. This is what's going to ensure that the trailer is locked on to the truck securely. If the pin goes through, you know you've got it set up correctly and it can't come undone from the ball of the vehicle. Next we have the safety chains and they um, have hooks that clip onto the, the security hole on the vehicle. I like to cross the chains once or twice with one going this way and the other one going this direction. Next is the hookup for the lights on the trailer. All of our trailers have this seven pin RV connection um, and so you need to make sure your vehicle can accommodate that type of plug. And then lastly is the breakaway cable for the trailer. What this does is if the trailer were to come unhooked from the vehicle somehow, this cable will pull and activate the brakes on the trailer so that it doesn't keep rolling away. All right, and then if you're using one of our equalizer hitches, you'll want to lower the trailer down onto the ball of the tow vehicle, just enough to get that pin locked in, and then you want to swing the arms up onto the side of the trailer and lock those in. Then lower the rest of the trailer weight down onto the tow vehicle. What that does is help transfer some of the weight of the trailer up to the front tires of the tow vehicle for cornering and braking, 
and it also helps with sway control as you're driving down the road. Now be mindful of the things that you put inside the trailer. If you're using one of our equalizer hitches, make sure that does not go inside the trailer on the linoleum. We've had quite a few trailers damaged that way, as well as you know generators and other rough equipment like bikes and things like that. Please be careful with the flooring of our trailers. All right, once you arrive at your campsite, the first thing you're gonna need to do is level the trailer. So with the level that's provided with the trailer, you'll wanna check for side to side levelness using the back bumper of the trailer. So you just put that on there. And then uh, depending on which side is high or low, you'll raise that side up using the tires of the trailer and the blocks that we provide. With these blocks, you'll tuck them up underneath the trailer tire. and back up onto them. If you needed to go even higher, you can build a little ramp using these blocks. Go even too high here. Once you back up onto the blocks, then you check your levelness again and make sure you're nice and level. And then once your vehicle's level side to side, you want to chalk the tires using the included chalks. Just one on each side of the tire tuck them in nice and firm, and then the same on the other side of the trailer on one of the tires. Okay, now that you're level side to side and the tires are chalked on the trailer really well, it's now time to unhook it from your tow vehicle and check levelness front to back. To check that levelness, you can just place the level here on the front A-frame of the trailer, and then you're gonna use the tongue jack raised or lowered in order to level the trailer front to back. Now you can drop the stabilizers that are on the trailer uh, there's a provided crank that you connect here. You just attach it to the end and just crank those stabilizers down until they're on the ground. Uh, once they touch the ground, I usually do another two cranks to support a little bit of the weight of the trailer, uh, but you don't support much of the weight. In fact, these stabilizers are not used to level the trailer whatsoever. They're just used to help eliminate some of the rocking motion of the trailer when you're walking around inside. Now when your trip's over and it's time to hook up and leave, you're going to do all of those steps we went over just in reverse. So first you're going to raise those stabilizer jacks that we lowered. Then you're going to hook up to the vehicle and of course raise the tongue jack all the way. Then remove the chocks that are on the tires on both sides of the trailer. Then pull the trailer off of any leveling blocks side to side and you're good to go. Now we'll go over the specifics of the Kodiak trailer that you have reserved here. On the front of the trailer is this cover for the propane tanks, and they're both just underneath. You can remove the cover when you need to fill them or turn them on. There's also a little access hole in the back of the cover, so you can reach through to turn those tanks on or off. So when you get to your site, you're just going to open up the passenger side tank first, and then if you need to, you'd roll over to the driver side tank. And that is done by just flipping that switch to the tank that you use. That way for this tank, and that way for that tank. The batteries are also here on the front of the trailer. Um, on this specific trailer, there's two of them. And those batteries charge by just plugging in the trailer that's on the back corner. And we'll show you that as we get around the side of the trailer. All right, moving down the driver's side of the trailer, you've got just a storage cubby here in the front. Here is the access for the water heater, but the water heater ignites with the switch on the inside of the trailer. So you shouldn't need to access this panel here. Uh, coming down here is just a little cable TV outlet hookup. Some hookup sites have actual cab cable TV you can connect to the trailer. Then you've got your water connection. So here's where it's important to know whether you have water hookups or not at your campsite. If you do not have water hookups, then you're going to be living off the water tank that's on the trailer. So before your trip or when you get close to where you're going, you would fill the water tank through this one using a garden hose or a water hose. Um, until that water starts to bubble back out then then you know it's full. Now if you have water hookups at your site then a garden hose will screw right onto the side of the trailer like so and the other side of the hose will have a pressure regulator on it that will need to connect to the water hookup um, pole. So this will screw right onto that spigot and then onto your garden hose and that regulates how much water pressure goes through the hose and into the trailer so that the lines don't get blown out no matter what the pressure is. Now back here towards the back is the sewer connection. If you have a site that has a sewer hookup, then you would connect the hose and run it directly into the hole in the ground that is designated for that sewer outlet. Otherwise, you'll be using this sewer connection to empty your tanks at the end of your trip. 
So you would go to a designated waste facility, connect the hose like we've done, and run this into a designated uh, spot in the ground. To connect the sewer hose here, you just remove the cap by twisting and pulling it off. And then the hose is going to connect over these little knobs here. You put it on and just rotate it tight over those knobs. Now you've got your gray handle here, which is for your gray water. This is for your sinks and your shower. Pulling that out will open that up to drain it out. Then you've got your black handle back here, which is for your toilet and your sewage. And again, pulling that handle this direction would empty that. When you're at your site or emptying out your tanks, you would do the black water first, let that drain out completely, then do the gray water second to kind of help wash down all that sewage, and then run lots of fresh water through the sinks and especially through the toilet. Now here on the back corner of the trailer is where the power cord for the trailer is stored. Now again, it's important to know whether you're going to have full-time power at your camp site or whether this cord um, can also be plugged into a generator to power some of the appliances in the trailer such as the microwave and the air conditioner. Now we include an adapter for the, for the power cord to plug into a regular outlet, but most campsite hookups actually have this different configuration which is a 30 amp plug. The trailer does require a 30 amp connection, so that's something you'd want to double check um, for your hookup site. Um, so now it's time to set up the beds on the outside of the trailer. On this trailer, the only thing you need to do on the outside for the beds is to loosen the buckles here on each side of the trailer. And then it just pops down this way. Now you can see the different canvas material here for the trailer. And this just gets pulled, and you see the, the Velcro here can be Velcroed all the way around the sides. But most importantly, make sure this green layer is tucked over the outside corner on both sides. Alright, and then there's a bed on the front of the trailer, just like the bed on the back. Just loosen each buckle. And the bed folds on down. Now the rest of the setup for the bed to pop out the canvas the rest of the way is done from the inside of the trailer. But to set the bed back up, you know, just make sure it gets all the way unvelcroed all the way around and that the canvas is out of the way when you go to buckle this back up. And those buckles just go across here and a snap there and a snap there. Here on the passenger side of the trailer, you've got that access panel for the fridge. This is just for service use. The fridge will turn on and off from inside the trailer, which we'll show you here in a minute. Now here below the fridge access panel is our heater outlet. Um, this does get hot to the touch, so just be aware uh, that you don't put any items close to it, and then you, know, you want to be careful that you don't accidentally touch it. Here underneath the door is a step to help you get in and out of the trailer. It folds out just like that by pulling on it. And then make sure it gets put away all the way, of course, while you're in travel. Just inside the front door are a couple light switches here. This one controls the main lights to the cabin. And then this is an outdoor light that turns on and off. You've got a CD DVD player up here. Now this switch will control the slide out on the side of the trailer. So you just press and hold it down until the slide out's all the way out. Now right underneath the kitchen sink is the main control panel cluster for the trailer. Uh, you've got a few switches here. First these read the meter on the battery, read the meter on how full your fresh water, your gray water, and your black water are. And then also in here is your pump for your water. Now again this comes back to whether you have water hookups at your site or not. If you have water hookups where you're screwing that hose onto the side of the trailer, you don't need to run the pump. But if you're using the water from the water tank underneath the trailer, you do need to use the pump in order to pump that water from the water tank up to your faucets. So you would turn it on there. And you can hear the pump run to pressurize the lines in the trailer. Then if you turn on your water here, you'll have that water pressure. And again, that pump will run to continually pressurize the lines. We ask that you only use the water pump as you need it. So if you need to flush the toilet or use the sink, turn the pump on. Otherwise, leave the pump off. Now these next two switches are for your water heater. There's two methods for heating the water inside that water heater. The first switch will activate the propane method of heating the water. 
Now it takes about 10 to 15 minutes for that water to get down to temperature. So we ask that you only turn on the water heater when you actually need hot water or 15 minutes before. The second switch will heat the water off of electric power, but you'd only want to use this switch if you're hooked up to full-time power electricity at your site. And again, when you're not using the hot water in the trailer, just go ahead and have those turned off. All right, to complete the setup of the beds, both front and back, first thing you're gonna do is just remove the bungee cord here. And inside each mattress is a shepherd's crook thing that we'll need. All right, now take the shepherd's crook here and you're gonna connect it to this bar that's inside the bed. Push it straight up and back and then connect the top of the shepherd's crook into the bracket. Now your bed's set up and ready for the mattress. Now on the stove, this is a stove that's gonna run off your propane. So you would just turn a knob here to light and with the lighter, just spark at the corresponding burner. For the oven, you'll just open up the oven. The far right knob activates that push it over here to pilot, hold it in while you spark with the lighter inside the oven. Now the fridge can run off of electricity or on propane. To run it off electricity, you would just flip it to the left here, but you would only want to do that if you had full-time hookup power at your site. To run it off of propane, you would flip it to the right where it says gas, and then you would want to keep an eye on this bottom yellow light that yellow light indicates that the fridge is working and operating off of gas. If it ever starts flashing, that means that it is not ignited anymore. And that could be because there's an air bubble in the gas line or because the propane is turned off up front or you've run out of propane. If that happens, just flip it to off, wait 10 or 15 seconds, and then flip it back to gas. On the far right here is your temperature setting. We usually find that three or four is sufficient. Located back towards the back bed is the thermostat for the heater. To activate that, you would just set it at a desired temperature. We usually find between the third or fourth tick mark here, and that will just kick on and off as needed to maintain the temperature in the trailer. Now, when you wake up in the morning or you're not using the heater, it's always best to have it turned off all the way to the left and a click to make sure it's off. Now the toilet's going to flush by pulling the gray lever here on the side back towards you. Um, most importantly though, you must always use our RV safe toilet paper that we include with the trailer. And then we also include some chemical that you want to use inside the black water tank if you don't have sewer hookups. Because that sewage will be sitting in the black water tank, this will help break down that sewage and make it so it doesn't smell as bad. We usually say one of these tablets every other day. You can just toss it in and flush it with the toilet. Now if you don't have water hookups, you'll need to run the pump in order to flush the toilet with some water. But most importantly, do not put any other products down the toilet except our RV safe toilet paper. No paper towels, rags, or otherwise. Now there's three appliances that are required to have plug-in power. So if you don't have plug-in power, you either need a generator or you just live without those appliances. That's the microwave, the air conditioner, and your TV. Also, all of the outlets inside the trailer become active once you're plugged into full-time power. So if you don't have that power plug-in, you know, you won't be able to plug in a phone and charge that or anything along those lines. All right, this shows the dinette in bed mode here. So to put it back as a dinette, these cushions here are the backrests. This one slides over to be the seat, along with this shorter gray section. And then the table comes out of the middle and will stand up on these two poles. Here. And you're all set. Now your sofa also folds down into a bed and that's accomplished just by grabbing the backrest here, pulling it all the way down around and flat. All right, and I also just wanna emphasize keeping the trailer clean through the duration of your trip. As dirt and rocks and little pebbles get tracked in, it's really hard on our floor. Uh, we provide a broom so that you can keep the trailer, you know, broom swept during the duration. And again, we feel it's a good idea to kick your shoes off as you come inside the trailer. It really helps with wear and tear on everything, especially the furniture. And then included with each trailer is a user manual, along with a cleaning checklist of the things that you need to go over and make sure clean. 
You know, as a general guideline, we always say to return the trailer as clean as when you took it. Thanks again for choosing Planet Rentals for your next camping trip. We hope you really enjoy our trailers and that you have a great time.